right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm taking off my. Good morning, Pastor Mark. All right. How you doing, Sister Crawford? Uh, I need. I'm doing fine. I was. Sister so Crawford. The yes, Sister sir. Crawford. Please, please just go on mute right now, and we'll talk after after the broadcast. I got to get started here. I'm live on Facebook, and I can't mute you. I can't mute you right now. I can't mute you right now. No. So just just listen in and, and be careful what's going on in your background if you don't know how to mute your phone. Okay. Thank you so much, Sister Crawford. Appreciate you. Um, good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Mark McCoy of the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. Um, this is your Sunday School Lesson Edition. I am in... Uh, uh, let's see, best way to describe it for me is Don Donaldsville, uh, or Donaldsonville, I think that's how they say it, uh, uh, Georgia, but I'm in Georgia, outside of Atlanta, and uh, I'm out at one of my fraternity brothers' house, uh, Robert Minifield, and his wife, Anita Minifield, and uh, I'm going to still try to do the little Sunday school lesson. I do have my Facebook Live going. Uh, the conference call is going on at the same time, but I don't have control of it right now. So I've called my sister, Apostle Kizzy, to uh, see if she can get on to the conference call and go live I mean, and uh, record it properly for me. But thank you all for showing up this morning. Uh, shout out to uh, Sister Pamela out there and uh, the others that's out there. I thank you so much. Uh, let's go now to the Lord in prayer uh, as we get ready to study our Sunday school lesson. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. Lord, you've been better to us than we have been to ourselves. We thank you for being God and being God all by yourself. Lord, we lift you up and give you all the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. It is truly a blessing to be able to call you God. It is an awesome blessing. To know for sure by faith that you know us by name. According to your word, you know every hair on our head, dear Lord. So we thank you right now for your word that you have given us. We thank you, Lord, for your word that came alive in us for us. The word, Jesus the Christ, your living word. Thank you. Thank you right now, Lord, for Jesus the Christ who came, who was full of grace and truth, who taught us, who led us, who guided us, and left a word for us to live by. Thank you, not only for his word and him being the word, but thank you to Heavenly Father right now for his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Because without his death, without his burial, and without his resurrection, we would not have access and to your marvelous and absolutely glorious grace. Thank you, Lord, for forgiveness of our sins. Thank you, Lord, that he's now, Jesus the Christ, is sitting at your right hand, interceding on our behalf. Oh, thank you, God, for Jesus. Thank you for the lamb that was slain. Thank you for his blood that was shed. Thank you, the Heavenly Father, for Jesus and all that is due that he does for us, in us, and through us. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for all that the Holy Spirit does in our lives. He seals us until the day of redemption. He, he brings all things to our remembrance right now. And then, Lord, when we aren't doing what we're supposed to do, he is there, right there, convicting us and convincing us and leading us into the right direction. Thank you, God for your Holy Spirit. Now, Lord, we just ask you as we get ready to study your word this morning, anoint afresh. Bless everyone on this line that's listening now and those that are going to listen in the future. Bless them, the Heavenly Father, that they might receive your healing, your wholeness, and your deliverance. Show them your love, oh God. Show them your love, oh God. Show them your love like never before that they might have a relationship with you, dear Lord, that they might know you in the pardon of their sins, that they, all of us might know you as our friend, and even more than a friend, 
our Lord and our Savior. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. This call is being recorded. Hallelujah. God is able, y'all. Uh, the God in Light Ministry recording has just started. I praise God for Apostle Kizzy being able to jump on and, and record for us. So I am just so happy this morning. Welcome again, everyone, on the God in Light conference call, and welcome those who are on uh, live on Facebook. Our lesson for this morning, this Sunday school lesson, and let me say this on, for the conference call, this is Pastor Mark McCoy of the New Harvest E Church in Harvest, Alabama, and I am recording uh, live from uh, uh, Atlanta area, Atlanta, Georgia today. We had a wonderful weekend here in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, Gramlin State University, my alumni, won the, the uh, Historical Black College National Championship for the 15th time. Oh, glory, hallelujah. So we were in town for the football game. And I'm just so happy with how God has blessed us to, to, to be able to celebrate this win for the 15th time. This is the first time that our present coach, Broderick Fobb, has been able to win um, the national championship. And I'll be talking about his life story just a little bit later in the midst of this lesson. The title of today's lesson is Too Good to Be True. Too Good to Be True. There are things that happen to us in life that we are astonished by because they are too good to be true. It's like, whoa, 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 what was all of that? Sometimes it's blessings that, 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 that come at us, and it's like, this is just too good to be true, where other times there are things that come at us that are so devastating. We say, God, this can't be true. What's going on? And we cry, and we moan, and we groan, because we know that it looks like this, this, this can't be happening. This must be a dream. This must be a nightmare. But that, 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 that thing that's going on in your life, it seems like it's just too good to be true. And I'm, I'm here to tell you that there are things that are going to happen in your life that you are going to be astonished. You are going to be amazed. And the reason is, is because we serve an awesome God. We serve an amazing God. And he will do things in our lives that will just blow our mind. And they are too good in our minds to be true. It must be too good to be true. But I'm here to tell you, he does it. Every time I've watched him do it over and over and over again in our lives. And that's what our story is about today. Something happened in someone's life that was too good to be true. To the point where he even questioned the messenger that told him it was getting ready to happen and that it was going to come to pass. It was too good to be true. So our lesson is centered on the 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 uh uh a messenger which is the Gabriel I mean Gabriel the angel coming to Zechariah. We want to turn to Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1 starting at verse 8 and going all the way down to verse 20. And if you excuse me today just because of of, 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 I'm trying to do these messages in a 30 minute slot so that, that, that those that are coming to capture this later will say, man, he got all this information in 30 minutes. Oh, it's just the anointing of God. So we, it may seem like I'm rushing through this, but if you want to get with us on the conference call afterwards, you can call into the conference call and listen in to what we're doing after we get through with the message. Because after we get through with the message, we go into the conference call and have what we call overtime. And that number for right now, and I'll give it to you later, is 910 
218-0531. But now let's go and look at our text. And the first point that I'm going to make in this in this lesson today is an astart a startling appearance and a surprising announcement. That's verses 8 through 17 in Luke chapter 1. A startlingly startlingly uh, appearance and a surprising announcement. Here we go. Let's read it. And I'm, we're familiar with this text, so I can actually read it from the uh, New Living Translation, and you can follow me well. Listen to the text. One day, Zechariah was serving God in the temple, for, for, for his order was on duty that week, as was the custom of the priest. He was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and burn incense. While the incense were being burned, a great crowd stood outside praying. When uh, Zechariah was uh, in the sanctuary, an angel, an angel, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing to the right of the incense altar. And Zacharias was shaken and overwhelmed with fear when he saw him. But the angel said, don't be afraid, Zacharias. God has heard uh, your prayer. Oh, somebody ought to say, God then heard my prayer. Yes, yes, yes. Your wife, Elizabeth, will give you a son, and you are to name him John. You will have great joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or other alcoholic drinks. He will be filled up with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. And he will turn many Israelites to the Lord their God. And he will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. Oh, hallelujah. And he will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. He will turn the heart of the fathers to their children. And he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. Oh, yes, yes. I don't know about you, but if an angel appeared to me in the form that this angel appeared to 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 Zacharias. I would be startled. I'm just saying what I'm saying. It it was scary. I'm gonna say it like they used to say it when I was a kid. It was scared the heebie jeebies out of me if the angel showed up like that. And, and that's and that's what happened to to Zachariah. Here he was doing his duty. He was doing what he was assigned to do. Back in that day, there were so many priests, and the priests had duties, and they had them in, in order. It was like a regiment of about a thousand priests per family of the 12 tribes of Judah, or, being, or the 12, not 12 tribes of Judah, excuse me, of the sons of Aaron. And it was just so many priests going on at that time. And they had a rotation going on. You know how we do it at our churches today. You know, we're going to have certain preachers preach on this time of the year and certain preachers preach on that time of the year. And that's what was going on. They had their assignments. And, and this was a once-in-a-lifetime assignment. Some people who were priests at this time would live forever and never get an opportunity to ever go and burn the incense. Where did they burn the incense? They burned the incense in the Holy of Holies. And these incense were part of the Jewish tradition that God had established long time ago that when these incense were burned, they would be the prayers of the people going up to God. And the incense were being burned. And he he had the opportunity, the joy, 
the privilege of being one of the priests that not only was chosen to be on duty, but by lot, they said, just by chance, he was the one that also had the opportunity to go into the Holy of Holies. And oh yeah, there's some funny stuff going on about the Holy of Holies. They say they used to put a, a rope around the people and put bells on them because when you go into the presence of God and, and, and their tradition, you may not come out alive. Because if you weren't right with God, God would do some say. He's like, oh, don't be coming up in my presence like that with unclean hands. Oh, but thanks be to God. We don't have to follow that tradition now because it's not based on our own self-righteousness, but it's based on the righteousness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we can always go boldly. To the throne of grace, knowing that, that, that what we're coming for, what we need, God got it. And he will most definitely give it to us because we're coming in the blood of Jesus Christ. I said, that's why I had to wear my red sweater. It's Christmas time. Everybody love the red. But I'm covered in the blood, the blood of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now watch me, watch me now, watch me, watch me. So now here he was on duty doing what he is supposed to do. And the word earlier in the scripture tells about the fact that him and his wife were both of the priestly tribe of Aaron and that he was on duty. This is all up in the previous verses. And then it laid out the fact that both of them were in good standing with God. And they were in good standing with God. And now, while he's doing what he's supposed to do, being in good standing with God, the angel appears. And when that angel appears, oh man, it says the angel stood on his right hand. When an angel stands on your right hand, the tradition was that this angel was coming to give you a message of favor, a message of good news, a message of good tidings, and he was on the right side. Oh, yes. And so here it is. Here it is. The angel came. And this is the message that the angel said to Zechariah. He said, he said, oh, man. Well, well, first, do I want to go there? Yeah, this is the message that he said. He says, oh, don't be afraid. Because he knew he was startled. He knew he was scared seeing this angel. He was shaking with fear. He said, don't be afraid. God has heard your prayer. God has heard your prayer. He made that message personal to Zechariah. It wasn't a general message to anyone else. This was a message straight from God to Zacharias. And he says, your wife, Elizabeth, will give you a son, and you will name him John. Now, here it is. Zachariah and Elizabeth are old now. The scriptures say they were stricken. That's one of the words. They were in their old age. And, and, and Elizabeth has been barren. And it, it, they, she was barren. And many people thought if you were barren, that meant that you were cursed. But she wasn't barren because she was cursed. Because you go back and read, Luke took his time and told us earlier that they were in right standing with God. So they weren't cursed. This is just how it happened. And God told him, man, I didn't heard your prayer. I know what you've been praying. I know how you've been going, coming to me over and over again, saying, Lord, you know how these people are treating my wife. You know how these people are dogging us out. Please, Lord, please give us a child. And he was probably at a point where he had stopped even praying that prayer. He had lost all hope. And that's why I want now, I want to bring up my coach, the coach of Gramlin State University, Broderick Fogg. 
I experienced some things in 2011, and he experienced some things in 2011. What did he experience? He was at a point in his life where he had dreamed and had aspirations and desires to be a coach. He had been performing as a coach at various different roles, but it looked like everywhere that he went, it became a losing organization. It wasn't his fault. He wasn't the head coach. He was one of the offensive coordinators. He was the, the lineman coach. He, uh, not the lineman, but the tight end coach, the receiver coach. All these different positions that he had. But it was always with a team that ended up with a losing season. And then he would get fired from these jobs because they would fire the head coach and they would uh, fire the assistant coaches. So he was at a point in his life where he was ready to give up coaching. But this is the thing that he knew. His father was a football coach. Not only was his father a football coach, he had played for the greatest coach, football coach ever to live, Eddie Robertson of Grambling State University. And at this point in his life, he was ready to give up. Give up coaching. Came home, told his wife, I'm giving it up. I'm going to be an insurance agent, knowing that that wasn't his calling. That wasn't his reason for living. And then all of a sudden, God started communicating to him. Told him to start writing down everything that he was telling him. And God started giving him a plan of how to be a head coach. Taught, telling him plays, ways of doing things, ways to discipline people, ways to teach these people. And, 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 and Roger, Roger Fox would get up in the middle of the night and God would be giving him a message about football because that was his calling. And to make this story short, here it is. In 2013, Gremlin football program went into a total disaster. And by the end of that season, even the football players were barcoding the football team. And they fired or let go of the head coach, and they hired Broderick Fobbs at the end of the 2013 season. And he coached us, coached the team in 2014. He coached the team in 2015. And here it is in 2016, he wins the national championship. Oh, that ain't nobody but God. If, if God would have told him in that message in 2011 that you would win the national championship in 2016, he would say, God, this is too good to be true. And I sit here and I tell you, if God would have told me in 2014, if God would have told me in 2011 that, 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 that I would be preaching on Facebook, I would be preaching on the God in Light ministry, and this message would go out every week to over 50,000 people all around the world. I say, God, that's too good to be true. It's too good. And what I hear God saying today to me, baby, you ain't seen nothing yet. Because, oh, hallelujah, I'm talking to somebody on this line. You, you think what you're doing now is good? You ain't seen nothing yet. Let me go on back to my text because I wanted to just give this illustration. And he says, now, look, I have heard your prayer. And your wife, Elizabeth, who is old age, she getting ready to have a child. And you're going to name that child John. And that name, John, is a special name. John is a very, very special name because John, that name, that name, John, that name, John, means something. John means to be gracious or Jehovah is gracious. And when you name a child John, you are telling people that this child is going to be gracious and, he, and Jehovah is going to be gracious to him and this child is going to be an instrument of God's marvelous and amazing grace. And if you don't understand God's grace, that's his unmerited favor. That's what he gives us when we don't deserve it. Yes, that's his grace. That's his favor. Oh, hallelujah. And he says, you will, you will have great joy and gladness. He's talking to Zacharias. You're going to have great joy and gladness. 
You're going to be happy. You're going to be jumping with joy when this child is born. And then it says, and many other people will rejoice at his birth. I don't know about you. But see, that's that's why I have this mentality that 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 when I see other people being blessed, I get happy too. Why do I get happy when I see other people getting blessed? Because when they get blessed, I Think in my mind, oh God, glory, hallelujah, thank you for blessing them. And then I get really happy. I get to jumping because it's like, oh God, I must be next. I must be next in line. If you didn't bless them, I must be next in line. Even the dogs understand what I'm talking about. They barking because when somebody else is getting fed, the dogs say, I must be getting ready to get fed next. Even dogs understand that. Why are we so hatred? Haters in this world, we walking around hating on people because they being blessed, being envious with that green eye envy and jealous. Don't be jealous. Don't be no hater. Be, be a celebrator. And I think about this. We must celebrate when we see other people being blessed because you just might be next. Let me go on with the text. And so it says that 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 uh, that uh, all people will rejoice. So and this is what he says about him. For he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. I love that portion. Great in the eyes of the Lord. The text was being real specific when he says this. He says the angel was saying he's going to be great in the eyes of the Lord. He didn't say he's just going to be great in the eyes of men. He's going to be great in the eyes of the Lord. You must understand when you start doing things for God, God knows what you're doing for him and he sees you in that vein. Others may not appreciate. Others may not appreciate what God is doing in your life because there is a lot of hateration going on. And John in particular, the John, this John that we're talking about is John the Baptist. And we know the end of his story. He ended up getting his head cut off. Why? Because you had all of these haters. They didn't enjoy. They didn't appreciate him telling him that you must repent because the Lord is at hand. The kingdom of God is coming and you must repent and turn from your wicked ways. People don't appreciate you telling them that. They want to stay in their comfort zone. They want to stay in their mess. And John was a forerunner of Jesus to Christ to let them know that the kingdom of God was at hand. And when you tell people the kingdom of God is at hand, and that they must repent, you're going to have some folks that don't like it. And he went on to tell them, and many in Israel, many, in Israel, he says, oh, don't let me skip it. He says he must, this is verse 15, he must never touch wine or alcohol. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. This is to let us know he has what they call a Nazarene calling on his life. Just like Samuel, just like Samson, where they couldn't touch wine or alcohol of any kind and they kept their hair long and they and their hair and and, and they and they were filled with the spirit and they were made a vow to stay that committed to God. Now it says he in verse 16 this John this child will turn many Israelites Israelites to the Lord God and he will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah, one of the greatest prophets to ever live. And he will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. To, and he will turn the hearts of the father to the children. And he will cause those who are rebellious to accept wisdom of the, God, of the, of the, of the godly. Oh, if I had time, I would talk about his power being like Elijah. I will talk about the fact that he has the ability to speak a word that would turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. This is a paraphrase of Malachi 
chapter 4, where it was told that there would be a one coming like Elijah who would turn the hearts of the father to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. Oh, America. Oh, African American. Oh, ooh, we need to hear this all around the world, no matter what your race, creed, or color is. We need our fathers turning their hearts back to their children. And we need the children to turn their hearts toward their fathers. Oh, and then when they do that, that's when they will understand that they are being rebellious. That's not just the children. That's the fathers and the mothers too. Oh, if I had some time, I would preach that some more. But I'm going to go on but for, for brevity. Let's go on. Let's go on. This, 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 this startlingly shocking appearance of this angel. And this surprise announcement that this angel gave. That, that you're going to have a son that is awesome. You're going to have a child that is going to be a blessing to all Israel. Man, how do you think Zachariah felt? Was he happy? Was he glad? What would you think now? Well, here's the thing. When he heard that message, that surprising message, he came and gave a skeptical question. And in result, the angel gave him a silencing response. Listen to verses 18 through 20. Zechariah said to the angel, how can I be sure this will happen? I'm an old man now. And my wife is also well along in age. Listen to his skeptical question. This angel has appeared to him and gave him this glorious message. And yet, he's skeptical. Yet, he has doubt. Yet, he will not receive the blessing in his heart and in his head. It was just too good to be true. My, my, my fraternity brother, Tony, is here in town with us in Atlanta. And he was telling us a story as we were going to the game. He says, man, these people called me on my telephone and said, hey, hey, brother, you finna get ready to get a promotion. We have chosen you. We know it's out of cycle, but we have chosen you for this new position. We're just calling to make sure you're ready to receive this new position. And he was like, who is this? Who are you? What you doing? Telling me I got a new job. So who put you up to this? Did my wife put you up to this? Did, 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 did my boss put you up to this? Come on now. Y'all know y'all playing a prank on me. You must be uh, Uncle Tommy calling from the Steve Harvey show. Somebody got this just too good to be true. Yes, yes, Tony. We're trying to tell you, you have this new position. You are being promoted. You can stay in your exact same office because we don't have any office space over in the new building for you. But you stay in your same office space and you're going to get this new responsibility. He say, uh-uh, you playing with me. Uh-uh, man, I ain't got time for this. Hey, let me go talk to my boss and see what's going on because you got to be telling me a joke. This is too good to be true. Tony went to his went to his boss and he talked to his boss and his boss said, yeah, we received the same letter. This is not a joke. Yes, it may seem too, too good to be true, but it's the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I don't know what God can say to you. I don't know what message he has sent to you, but if he's told you that you're going to travel the world and speak the word of God all over the place, believe him. Don't, don't be skeptical. Just do what he tells you to do. Believe it in your heart. Have that kind of faith that 
this thing that you have been told will come to pass. If I had more time, I would tell you what God told me. I can go back into my history. He told me I would have a beautiful wife. He told me I would have a beautiful uh, family. He told me I would have wonderful friends. Hey, if you would have seen me at 16, 17, 18 years old, when I got that kind of message in my life, you would say, oh no, that's too good to be true. Because prior to that, people that said, you're going to be dead by the time you're 16. You're going to be in jail if not dead. But here I stand, or here I sit in 2016. I don't know about you. God didn't bless me. This thing I'm dealing with has to be too good to be true, but I'm living it myself. I'm not dreaming. I'm living this life, and God has truly blessed me. But because Zachariah didn't believe the announcement of the angels. Because he was skeptical, the angel told him, this thing is going to come to pass. But because of your skepticism, because of your doubt, you're going to be punished. Now, I want you to hear this now before I even read the text. God can still bless you and discipline you at the same time because blessing and discipline go hand in hand. God disciplines those that he loves. That's what the scripture says. So don't think when God blesses you and God disciplines you that something you done did something so bad that he don't care about you. I don't know about you. I'm just glad he got his hands on me. Oh, yes, I had to put my hands up there because God is blessing me and disciplining me at the very same time. And he had to bless Zachariah because that was his plan and his purpose but he also had to punish him to help his unbelief because he asked for a sign what sign do you need you got an angel standing right there in front of you and this differs from when Mary was talking to the angel Gabriel she didn't ask for a sign she was asking, how will she know and confirm this thing? He wasn't asking for just a confirmation. He had doubt in his heart. Listen to the text. Verse 19. Then the angel said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the very presence of God. It was he who sent me to bring you this good news. My brothers and my sisters, especially those of us who are pastors, preachers, and teachers, people will be skeptical of the words that we say. But we have to stand like this messenger Gabriel and say, I'm telling you the truth. I stand in the presence of God. I get down on my knees and I pray about this word before I deliver. I get with God to make sure that that which I'm teaching and preaching his people is the word of God. Now, whether you want to believe it or not, that's your problem. But this thing I'm trying to teach and preach, I'm doing it because I trust what God has told me to say. I'm bringing you good news. Verse 20. But now, since you didn't believe what God said, you will be silent and unable to speak until the child is born, for many world words will certainly be fulfilled. For my my words, excuse me, my words will certainly be fulfilled at the proper time. The word of God will be fulfilled, whether you believe it or not. You could go around acting like you Ripley. 
believe it or not, but God's word will come to pass in its season, in its proper time. And I'm trying to tell somebody just to say, this is your season. Oh yes, God done told you some things will come to pass. Some of us on this very line right now and listening to this recording later have been praying and God, I'm just prophesying right now, and God will bring this thing to pass that he promised you in 2016. And then you you need to get on tiptoe anticipation for what God is about to do in 2017. I don't know about you, but I'm looking for my blessings. I'm expecting my blessings. I'm on tiptoe anticipation of what God is doing, going to do in my life. And I got that kind of faith based on what he's already done. He did it for others. He can do it for me. He did it in my past. He brought me this far, and he did not bring me this far to leave me. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to close this lesson out on, on Facebook with a simple, simple prayer. And I want you to hear this prayer. It will help you from this day forward. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for being patient with us even when we doubt you. Replace our doubt with faith as we wait for your plan and your purpose to happen in your timing in your schedule. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Mama said it like this. He may not come when you want him to, but he's always on time. Before we close any message on Facebook and on our conference call, we like to pray the prayer of salvation with you. Let us pray. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Those on Facebook, if you want to join us on overtime on the conference call, it is 910-218-0531. 910-218-0531. If you have any questions or comments, those on Facebook, we thank you for your comments. We thank you for your likes and your loves. Be blessed. And always be a blessing. Until next Sunday, this is Pastor Mark McCoy of the New Harvest Seed Church doing Sunday school on the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference call. Be blessed. <laughs>